greetings and welcome to the broadcast. I'm your host, and this is perhaps one of the most complex YouTubes ever done. Admiral Elmo Zumwalt on the left, Rudyard Kipling on the right. The backstory on these gentlemen. Let's start off with Rudyard Kipling, a gifted uh, journalist and writer. He wrote things like The Jungle Book, The Charge of the Light Brigade, Gunga Din. He started off his dad, not a child of privilege, he started off with his dad pretty good, ended up on Time Magazine, so you know he was connected kind of onto what the upper echelon. Unfortunately, he was responsible by his own admission for the death of his son, John, during one of the wars, which he was somewhat of a warmonger. To make amends, this book he wrote called The Village That Voted the Earth Was Flat, he wrote to kind of let us know what went on there. Elmo Zumwalt here followed the same basic career path. He also was on Time Magazine. He was connected. He was a strong military proponent and apologist. He was one of the guys uh, responsible for uh, spraying Agent Orange and ruining many people's lives. He also sacrificed his son, got sprayed with Agent Orange, in fact, and killed his kid. He wrote a book. The kid's propped up here but just shortly before his death. But Rudyard Kipling is who we want to focus on. The book he wrote gives us a glimpse into this, this crazy world these guys live in and shows us a little bit of, uh, well, the backstory, if you will. Now, here's Ruder towards the end there. He wasn't so good after his boy's death. Here's how he used to be. He wanted to have wine, a lot of ammunition and bullets and books. What happened? Well, his son John was basically born blind as a bat. The kid couldn't see. Uh, his dad pulled a lot of strings to get him a commission. He didn't want a commission in the Navy. He wanted to go to the Army. Dad kept pushing and pushing and pushing, and we'll look at it a little bit later on what happened. Finally, Ruder, uh, well, he's going to write to us in this book a little bit. Now, this timeline relationship, we're going to go over some things right now. Eric Clapton, at one time one of the world's best guitarists, uh, was involved in, in the music scene, heavily involved in the music scene in that area. Uh, Cosby, this is a man who was a United States kind of celebrity. Leonard Sly, this Leonard Sly comes up over and over again. He started out trying to make movies, didn't do so very good. He was an oath-taking Freemason, uh, did the best he could there. Married three women, first one uh, he sacrificed basically to his career. Second one was found dead, married in Roswell, New Mexico. Changed his name to Roy Rogers, got married a third time. There was also a tra tragedy, uh, death in his family as well and then his career kind of took off. But let's get back to Rudyard Kipling and tie this thing together. Here are some of the books. The guy was just a gifted writer, and we're going to be able to read between the lines as he basically speaks to us from the grave in this book called uh, The Village That Voted the Earth Was Flat. Now, Flat Earth has been around for a long time, and uh, he uses that very cleverly to speak to us. Now, we have to give some more examples here to, to make our point. You remember Art Linkletter? He was a, a personality. His daughter went out a window to her death, unfortunately. Art Linkler said this was not a suicide. He says, no, 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 these are not suicides, folks. He just faded and faded away. Eric Clapton, we looked at him a little later on. His young son, five-year-old boy, somebody no one knows, the window got loose. He went out a window to his death. There's a lot of controversy on this, but nonetheless, it happened. It was a tragedy, and Eric Clapton's boy perished out of a window. We can go on. Mary Osmond, she's the dark one. Uh, kid comes, hey mom, how's it going? How's the career going? They have a talk. Next thing you know, the kid goes out a window to his death. These are not random incidents. Uh, we, we can go back as far as Gloria Vanderbilt here. Her kid goes out a window to his death. Now here's a real piece of work here. L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology, uh, his kid was found gassed with a gas pipe, dead in a car. But this guy never came clean. All these investigations are never clean. There's always a little, something going on. Burt Bacharach, this guy, his racehorse runaround wife, Angie Dickinson, they had this little girl here. She was found with a bag over her head. Then they says, no, it was, it was really helium, found dead. Uh, Bruce Lee's son, who's death here. Now, this is one that we can't really call. We don't know what happened there on that. Uh, Douglas, hey, Dad, how's it going? He's found dead from a suicide, Michael Douglas's boy. The women in Hollywood are twice as bad. Uh, sometimes. Mia Farrow, they took two kids out of her home, basically dead. Uh, I'll let you look it up for yourself. You can do the research. Mike Tyson, unfortunately, this little girl, some stories say she had a strap around her neck from a sash cord. Others say it was an exercise machine. Different stories going on. But let's get back to Rudyard Kipling. Let's tie this thing together. Let's show some things that maybe uh, are coming out now. Now, here's what that happened to his boy. The boy blind as a bat, 
His dad got a special appointing by pulling in markers, and the kid couldn't see. Look at his sunken chest, just like was Umwalt's kid with his sunken chest. They had to puff him out. His first time out there, he's, he's dead. They had to put somebody in the graveyard. They couldn't find his body, so they put some kind of a graveyard stone up. Here's the stone itself. But that was turned out to be a lie, and they kept saying, Rudyard Kipling, what happened? Where's your boy? He wrote a poem about it, of course, and you can see he was a true warmonger. He would have been one of those ones that wanted to go in for weapons of mass destruction type of guy. Now, we've got to look at more backstories here so people will believe what we're trying to show them. Anna Nicole Smith, her son came to visit her. Next thing you know, the kid's dead on the floor with a drug overdose. But he, the cause of death was never really affixed. No, no, the, the detectives couldn't quite get it together. It took weeks before they could get the, come up with something about it. Here's another one, Barbara Eden. Uh, I mean, it just never ends. But we have to give these examples, as tragic as they are, to make our point here about Rudyard Kipling. The next one, Mary Tyler Moore had a gifted voice. Richie, remember Richie? How's Richie doing? My son, my boy. Richie was living with two women, one from Fresno, California. It was probably a big mistake there. He was just getting ready to start a brand new job with CBS, I believe. The police say, well, one of the girls said he had a shotgun. He was just kind of playing around with it. Others said he was spinning it. One said he was saying, she loves me, she loves me not. And they blamed the shotgun slain uh, death for the boy. Now, here's another dark one, another oldest boy sacrificed for whatever reason. Uh, John Travolta, just a mess. The police originally said the kid was beat up real bad in the front. The whole thing was fishy. There was a so-called homosexual living inside that got kind of covered up. Somebody said there could have been a 110 volt cord. It's just a mess. You never get a clean cause of death certificate with these Hollywood people. And uh, you can look it up on your uh, Travolta got dark after this. You can see it in his eyes. You can see it in things. Uh, in fact, many of these guys, you can see it. The next one, we don't know if Greg Allman was involved in this, but Marlon Brando's daughter, you take a guess. Yeah, she was found hung, hung herself to death. Uh, Gregory Peck, oh, don't feel bad about Gregory Peck, because he said that he uh, had a little trouble working for a couple of years after his son's suicide. Nothing to see here, folks. Paul Newman, how's it going, Dad? This kid's done before you know it. Willie Nelson, if you can believe this, they say Willie's boy owed a few dollars, was in arrears of money. So what's he do? He goes out and hangs himself. Look it up on Google, don't believe me. Willie Nelson's boy could have shook hands at a casino somewhere and made more money than you or I could have made in a year probably. So I don't quite buy it. Who else's son gets it? Here's one, Carol O'Connor, remember him? Now it's not always, you don't know when it's going to happen. Here's Cosby, his boy was shot in the head by accounts changing the tire. Here's a guy that Greg Allman, apparently, or with his daughter Jenny, was involved with somehow her suicide. Greg Allman, this poor guy, was exposed to death almost from day one. His dad was murdered by a hitchhiker. His brother, of course, sacrificed type of thing. And, and just, Remember what Art Linkletter said. Folks, these are not suicides. And this guy comes up over, Leonard Sly comes up over and over and over again. Here he, here's the movies he made as Leonard Sly before he changed his name to Roy Rogers. And before he went down here to this place called uh, Roswell, New Mexico for his second wife. She was found dead after uh, the kid. It's just, it, it's, it, there's too many things going on in these Hollywood people. Now, we don't want to you know, pick on anybody, but do you think there's something here maybe we can get from Rudyard Kipling's book that he's telling us? Oh, all the way, Roy also had his kid die, but was it Down syndrome? No, it was something else. Again, it's never, never, ever a clear, clean death certificate on these people. Same with Admiral Elmo Zumwalt. This guy was a, he was a gung-ho, uh, Vietnam era, kind of, what would you call it? He'd be a military industrial uh, complex apologist. He was heavy into spraying Agent Orange, ruining people's lives, sprayed people, soldiers in Canada, the United States, coalition partners. Now what you're seeing here is not Agent Orange being sprayed. This is Agent Orange being sprayed. The same stuff that killed his boy and caused the grandson, many people theorize, to be born as a monster. But boy, he wrote his book, but we, the book is nothing. It's nowhere near Rudyard Kipling, so we're not going to really take a look at it. But these guys follow a system. Do you see this? You get Time Magazine, you get fame or fortune, you typically sacrifice your first wife, not always, to your marriage, we should say. Without a doubt, your oldest is gone, is sacrificed, or let's just say there's a suspicious death. Then you try to write a book to make amends of it or to communicate with the public. 
Even the book, Mrs. Rudyard Kipling here had to straighten them out. The last minute she had to say, no, no, that's not true. This book was written about the boy's death, and you're not going to let you change that thing, the different dates being released, how he sat on it. Do you remember Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who wrote Sherlock Holmes? Same thing, oldest son dead on the battlefield. Uh, again, we hate, it's, it's depressing, folks, to make this at MacGuysencraft, because they, people will basically say things like, you know, oh, kids take drugs in Hollywood. Well, a few of them sure do, but not that many. So we have to give another example. Here's a dark one, Sylvester Stallone. He sure turned dark after his boy Sage, a mysterious death. It will, some could say suicide, some say heart attack, some say drug overdose. Same with Johnny Carson. Kid takes a plunge to his death. Now this is interesting. Uh, a world-class guitarist who could beat Eric Clapton named Stevie Ray Vaughan was used by uh, at the, the funeral. Let's, let's listen to just a snippet of Stevie Ray Vaughan here at Johnny Carson's funeral. Okay, now that's some real guitar work, and that's just one whisker, many people would say, above what Eric Clapton could do at the time. Eric Clapton, of course, uh, and Stevie Ray Vaughan played at a gig. There were three or four helicopters. Uh, everyone said, they'll get on, leave. Eric, at the last moment, it said Eric Clapton left his three bandmates on a the helicopter. They would only hold four people. Stevie Ray Vaughan was told to get on one, and Stevie Ray Vaughan, of course, crashed to his death. Eric Clapton scampered to safety on the other helicopter and nothing's here to see folks. Now, Charlie Chaplin, his first child, of course, was dead. What else do you think happened? Yeah, right. On Time Magazine, talk about, but he never communicated with us too much. He was, this guy was a real rounder. Lots of controversy, multiple wives, and, uh, but nonetheless, it doesn't matter who you plug into this. If you want fame and fortune, there seems to be a Hollywood way you can get it, if you're willing to sacrifice enough. Two dead kids on this guy, who we won't mention, Loretta Lynn, hard to tell. Why are two kids dead? Robert Plant, here's a singer. What do you think happened to this millionaire's four or five year old child? Read for yourself. Little stomach ache, hey dad, my stomach. Well, not gonna make it. Next thing you know, he's dead as well. This next one is very sad. Roy Orbison was in England where this was doing a gig when both of his boys, if you can believe this, burnt to death in a tragic fire. Before you know it, Johnny Cash became involved. This is a guy that sang the song Pretty Woman, an unbelievable voice, one of the few guys Elvis Presley didn't like to sing with. Anyway, Johnny Cash swooped in and bought the property right after the two kids burnt to death. And of course, Roy Orbison's career is legendary. And who comes up again and again is Leonard Sly. Let's go to some other examples, shall we? <coughs> Excuse me. Jerry Lewis, son overdosed. You can see it here for yourself. Now the next one, let's plug somebody in. Here's a real weasel, Rick Warren, sometimes called an apostate pastor. Google it for yourself, you see. He was involved in procuring a weapon that got his kid killed under suspicious circumstance. Oh yes, of course, the Time Magazine, fame and fortune is yours, Rick. Your boy's gone, you didn't have time for him. But this guy was a coward, he couldn't face up. He tried to get his wife to kind of talk about it. He leaked things, he wouldn't, so they finally had to get Piers Morgan to have some softball questions with his wife, of course. She had to get drug into this thing. But folks, keep sending your tithe and offerings to Pastor Rick. The man in the center who he's, quote, ministering to has the blood of millions on his hands. The woman on the right killed her first man when she was 17 years old. Of course, in good old Texas boy style, the death certificate and the accident report, you're not going to find out how fast she was going and why she wasn't hurt or her girlfriend when she killed her ex-boyfriend. This man on the right that Pastor Rick is ministering to is responsible for more veterans killing themselves in suicide by being drugged up, doped up, and lied to than any other president in history. But Pastor Rick, he's, his ministry doesn't stop there. Here he has a homosexual pop singer who he's become almost giddy with thinking about or talking about kissing on the lips while Pastor Rick ministers. Now folks, while we were making this thing, this took place here, this guy's kid got killed. Could the Bible have anything to say about these terrible deaths? Let's take a look. There are indeed a lot of young sons getting killed in the Bible and throughout history. 
let's get out of Hollywood. Let's go back, way back to the original son being sacrificed. His name was Jesus Christ. He didn't just die or somebody get him or put a bag over his head. Him and the Father got together and Jesus Christ said in his own words here in red ink, I'm going to lay my down, my life down for the sheep. That's you and me. And let's, it's always good to have two examples. Let's get one more scripture. He says, I'm going to lay my life down, but I'm going to take it up again and I'm coming back. So that was not a counterfeit. That was a real sacrifice. Here could have been a counterfeit. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we all know about this. Killing kids back in the, God said, by the way, don't do it. Killing kids back in that day was not a big deal. Uh, sacrificing your son or your daughter for your career or so you could get a military victory, not a big deal at all. God says, no, this was an original sacrifice. The Bible talks about a lot of guys getting killed. Another guy burned his son to death for a military victory. But Jesus Christ was the original. I proposed to you all the others were counterfeit. Here's how the counterfeit starts. This guy here in the Bible in 2 Kings needed a military victory just like old Zumwalt and old you know who, Rudyard Kipling, he burnt his kid to death. The Bible tells you, and it worked. To be sure, you'll get on time. You'll get fame or fortune or Time Magazine. Uh, quite often it can work, but that's not the right way to do it. Here's a verse here. If you're serious about it, you're not going to read a Bible cover to cover. Here it talks about going to the land, kind of falling in with this thing, this thing coming upon us, our kids and our wives getting it in this dirty place. If you read the Bible cover to cover, you won't have to wonder about all these things that come up in the future and chill child death and people here seeking fame or fortune, getting on Time magazine. Uh, it, it follows a spiritual, uh, well, a guidepost, if you will. Here's the guys we've covered right here. Now let's round this thing up. If you can, this book is available for free. It's called The Village That Voted The Earth Was Flat by Rudyard Kipling. Rudyard does a lot of works. One way you can get it, <coughs> excuse me, you can go right now to uh, Kindle or Amazon, and it's available for free there as we speak. If not, just put PDF or Google it. It's all over the way for free. Now, we've got to give a couple more examples for you naysayers. Remember Jerry Lewis? Here's Deaton Martin. What do you think happened to his oldest son? He was a gifted entertainer. Yeah, he was found dead in an airplane, nosed over at 4,000 feet. The investigation was inconclusive. How about little Vince Neal? He's got the blood of people on his hands. He got in behind a Ford over the fellow bandmate or somebody, a competitor, killed him in a Ford Pantera. Next thing you know, one of Vince's children is found dead with some kind of a, well, you look it up, you Google it and decide. Here's a picture of him before he did his jail time. Folks, please, I, I got to propose to you, it's statistically, statistical improbability that this could happen like this. Why is this classroom empty? because these are the kids who are born to elites. If it was a classroom like this, and the kids raise their hands and says, teacher, teacher, how come the classroom next to us, oh, kids are always missing all the time over there? The teacher would say, oh, that empty classroom? That's the kids of the elites, of those who parents in power. Go to the Bible and give yourself a dollar for every time a kid's sacrificed. Let's get to Rudyard Kipling. Here's the man that ties it. Here's his book. There's a little bit of a flat earth on the front of his book. In fact, here's the, the earth itself. You can take a look at it. Flat Earth, by the way, is really big on YouTube now. I'm gonna. Here's the first page, <coughs> excuse me, of uh, his book, and here is Orlando Ferguson's map to help you decipher this. As you can see, the Earth is the four corners, the the square, of the four corners of the Earth. The Earth is round in the center, and if you were to go east or west, your compass would be the same, north or south, north rather. If you went south, you would go into a large ring, and that ring is called Antarctica, by the Flat Earth proponents. So this will help you kind of decipher things as you, as you read uh, Rudyard Kipling's book. But now in the back, I'm going to go ahead and just put, I believe they're going to let us put 50 pages, like right now. It just changed to another page. And then uh, let's take a look in the background right about now. There's another page. So I'm going to have it clocking like that in the background in case you don't want to have to look it up. You can at least get a little sense of the book. And they'll let us do 40 or 50 pages. And we, no one's going to get in trouble or anything like that there. Folks... We've talked a little bit about fame and massive fortune, and the devil can give that in the Bible. You want fame or what he can't give you is eternal life. He can't give you peace. He can't give you healing. Oh, well, I'll take that back. Maybe he could give you some healing by taking away a, a denom demonic kind of a, a entity against your health. I don't want to get into that. Others have gotten into that, and uh, we'll let them run with that. It is indeed possible that 
there's a reason why the Bible said over and over again, don't kill kids, don't hurt kids, don't sacrifice kids, don't do this stuff to kids. There might be something there. I'm, I don't want to cast an expersion here, but there's a certain YouTube theorist, and you can decide if you think this is true or not, who say that in Hollywood there's a severe, heavy occult uh, terminology for everything you do. There's an occult influence for things you say, and it just goes on and on. What they submit, now no one here on this show is calling Eric uh, Clapton that he had anything to do with loosening that screen or his kid going out the window or that Art Linkletter was in a trance and loosened the screen. We're not saying that. But some people say that you have to, there's a book, and it starts out with, you know, Lucifer can help you with your career. If you just he really likes your music, sign your name here, and you may have to make a, you know, help him out sometime, show your allegiance, your, make a sacrifice. Okay, you sign it. And then it comes up, okay, you, it's time for a loyalty test. you got to sign this. You'll be on Time Magazine. You'll make a ton of money. You sign this book, and the next thing you know, your kid's gone. Now, this sounds fanciful. It sounds far-fetched. You do the research yourself. So this, this thing right here, just this little bit we're showing you, it blows some people's minds. And they say, you know what, this McEisencraft stuff, I just I can't take it all in. It's, it's too much. I can't think about all those tragedies. And it's believe me, it's no fun to make something like this, to make a video like this. I would much rather do the other things, the investigative work we do, occasional unboxing, see how God's work works in people's lives, see that there is, you know, the, how, how easy it is to read a Bible on an electronic device, to search it, for, search out words like children or divorce or drinking wine or going to prison or any of these things. That's interesting. That helps people. This kind of a thing can be a shock. And if you read this book, you're going to see it's kind of like a revenge comedy of such. It would take a rooted Kipling to make something called a revenge comedy when your own own boy is, is buried six feet under somewhere, not under the exact headstone. But he pulls it off here. And if you do decide to read this, I hope it helps you. I hope it gives you some encouragement, lets you know that there are indeed councils of darkness that the Bible talks about that seem to run things the wrong way from politics all the way down, that there is a way out, that Jesus Christ did lay his life down. He did four things. He shed his blood on the cross. He had his death, his burial, and resurrection all under his control. He took it up again. And right now, where is he? The Bible says he's at the right hand of God the Father making intercession for you and for me. That's one of the things. Could he be somewhere else? I'm not going to... Well, what do I know? I can just tell you what the Bible says and what has happened to people in history, throughout history. Now all these things about Johnny Carson having that guitarist play and all these guys being interlinked with just a, a trail of caskets, man, it, it, it pales. It, you can't let people say, well, people just use drugs and drive fast in Hollywood. It's way too many of the oldest child being sacrificed or the firstborn child, uh, which has been going on for many, many years. So in the future, when these things come up, and you see, not just because somebody gets on Time Magazine, you don't want to paint people with a brush like that and say they're part of an occult conspiracy or they've signed away their firstborn son. But the old saying, if the shoe fits, wear it. You might just take a look at what's going on around you a little bit more clearly than you are now. Get your head out of the TV set if you can. Do some investigative work. And if you want to prepare yourself and do your own investigative work, all you got to do is get a four or 500-year-old Bible the King James works great. Read it from cover to cover, just like you would a book. All this stuff you'll see that I'm showing you will come clear. You'll see it for yourself. You can make a little highlight or something that applies to you. And you don't have to uh, beat yourself up if you don't understand everything in it. But for heaven's sake, when you start seeing these so-called newspaper clippings, and that's about all they are now, and there's been a tragedy, you can put this into spiritual perspective and start thinking about heaven, about hell, about eternity, about what kind of person you should be, and more importantly, perhaps, how should you treat children? Now, we don't want to scare anybody, but if you happen to be the oldest son, and your dad's involved in a military career, he's involved in Hollywood or an entertainer, or even in the ministry, you might want to pray too. Folks, God bless you. We want to wish you peace. Take care. What's it going to take for you to read that Bible, huh? Give glory to God, and bye for now.